an important concept to be able to understand in control classes is how we can be able to understand and predict what kind of uh, response func graph we will get from a second order transfer function just by looking at it. And uh, in this example, I will go through how we can look at a given transfer function g of s and be able to derive um, the expected behavior from it. And so the first thing to do is recall the standard notation um, of the denominator, which tells us uh, that the denominator has a form tau squared times s squared plus 2 zeta times tau plus 1. And so we need to make our denominator look like that. And to do that, we're going to divide all the terms by 36. And what we find is that we would have 1 times s plus 1 divided by 1 over 6 quantity squared plus 5 over 6 up oh, times s uh, squared plus 5 over 6 times s plus 1. And so now that we have uh, g of s in a more standard notation, we can recognize that tau is equal to 1 6. And we can also see that 2 zeta times tau is equal to 5 over 6. And uh, plugging in the terms that we now know, uh, dividing both sides by 2 and plugging in 1 6 for tau tells us that zeta must be equal to 5 halves. And uh, as we'll recall from previous videos on second order transfer functions, uh, if zeta is greater than 1, it means that our system is overdamped and therefore will not exhibit oscillation. So no oscillations in our graph. Uh, another thing to take away from this is because we know that tau equals 1 6, uh, that means after 1 6 seconds or hours or whatever units of time we're using, we would be expect to be uh, 0.63 or 63% uh, of our way towards the new equilibrium value. And uh, finally, the last piece of information we obtained from this uh, transfer function is that we have numerator dynamics. Sorry. And uh, what that means is uh, if we place our numerator into its standard notation, which is tau a times s plus 1, uh, we will see that tau a is equal to 1. And uh, by definition, you can look at other uh, derivations on second order dynamics. Because our tau a, our time constant in our numerator, uh, is greater than our time constant in the denominator tau, we will have overshoot. And uh, with uh, taking all these pieces of information together, what we will find is that if we were to plot our uh, second order transfer function, and I'll call this a t equals zero, and we'll have a step change at t equals zero, uh, and this would be uh, the gain, we would find that after um, there would be some initial overshoot and then it would taper off to the new gain value. We would not see any oscillations occurring here because um, our zeta value, our damping coefficient, was greater than 1. And uh, this concludes how we can um, be able to predict what second order transfer function graphs should look, at, look like based on the transfer functions. And so I hope you guys find this useful. Let me know if you have any questions, and thanks for watching.